Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you what I found to be the best way to repair these and weld them and join them. Now, um, you could glue them, you could fill them, uh, but what I found with ABS and working with ABS, whenever possible, try and make your repair with the same material. Um, sometimes, if you glue, your glue is harder than the parent material when you're sanding. You're going to get a ridge uh, because you're removing the ABS quicker than you are removing the um, the glue material. So you know, I've tried several things. I've tried um, making a a um, what do they call it a goo sort of thing with acetone. All you do is sling a whole lot of offcuts of your ABS in a bottle with some acetone, and it dissolves, and you can you know get quite a nice gooey, gunky um, substance. You can glue with it. If it's a tiny crack, you could um, technically just run some acetone in there, um, and it'll sort of chemically weld it. Um, super glue works really well with ABS, um, but like I say, whenever possible, use the base material that you've used. It just makes when you finish the job later on, uh, it just makes things a whole lot easier. And I think from a sort of aesthetics point of view, um, look here. I think this is one of the nicer ones. Oh no, this is, this is one of the, the previous ones. But this is this one here was welded. Um, and I messed up the alignment ever so slightly. Um, but on a, on a, the one after this one, I got the alignment absolutely sp perfect. And um, you can't tell where the join is, you know, once it's once it's been finished. You really can't tell the join is. I mean, you can't feel the join where the join is, yeah, because it's all filled and, and, and whatnot. But um, no, um, that's a probably Whoops, nice, I don't know whether you can see that, I might have to do some stills of the sort of welded seam um, I'm welding it. Um, and again, these have been repaired um, down, down here, you know, several places, and, and dressed back. So, um, number one, if you can, always use the parent material to the repair if possible. Um, back on that. So, um, about a month ago I had an um, email from Hobby King um, and they brought out their own little 3D uh, pen and uh, to be honest, you know, I thought, you know, it looks like fun, it'd be fun for the kids. Um, and it's £35. A whole 35 pounds so you know I thought oh, I'll give it a crack um, and I had heard of guys using it to to weld um, ABS and uh, nylon and stuff with so it's from China so you get what you pay for it's uh, designed in China made in China um, don't know who the patent belongs to but that's another story <laughs> um, and at the moment this is my favorite tool absolutely love it it, it works really well. It doesn't work so well for, for what they intended it for, which is the 3D doodler type thing, but for welding and joining and repairing ABS parts, you can't go wrong for £35. It's, it's a great little piece of kit. Um, I'll probably buy another one to just put it aside uh, for when this one goes. Um, the, little, the little head comes off if you, if you get it clogged. Now, I think it comes with, uh, yeah, it comes with ABS, um, and it says you can do PLA with it as well. Um, I did try some PLA with it, and it just, uh, just jammed up. Um, there's no fan or anything cooling the filament, and um, typical air printing scenario um, with it. But um, I don't print very much with a, um, PLA anyway, but um, ABS, it works a treat. Um, there's a little screw in here where you change the temperature so you can increase or decrease the temperature. Um, I run it at, at max because uh, I'm just doing basically welding and repairing with it. Um, you got these two buttons here which is forward, pushes the um, filament out forward, brings it back and you got a nice little speed control on this side. Yeah, So that's slow and that's fast, that's chucking out quite quickly. I just, I mean, for the welding, you know, I have it on as slow as I can get it, really. So as hot as I can get it and as, well, as slow as I can get it. Um, and like I say, it's for £35, 
<laughs> it's a great little tool. I love using it. I love working on it. It's one of my favourite parts of the uh, mould making process, if, uh, if I'm honest. Um, welding up the bits and repairing it. Um, in the previous life, I used to be a, a fabricator welder, so it um, brings back a lot of memories. I know it's plastic, but TIG welding and aluminium and stainless steel, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little tool. I've got a whole lot of other ideas I want to try with it. But in this instance, we're just going to use it for repairing our nasty cracks where the ABS is cracked. Um, so we'll repair it, um, dress it all back, and then we'll um, actually use it as part of the joining when we join two faces together, two parts of the mold together. So I'm going to get this plugged in and switched on, and we'll take it from there. Right, so there we have it. Um, it's plugged in. Be nice if the lead was a little bit longer, but I can't really grumble. Thirty-five pounds. Um, it's on like standby. You've got two little LEDs there. You've got one that's on standby. Uh, as soon as you push the forward, it'll light up red, so it's heating up, and that'll turn green when it's ready to to go. So it only takes a about a minute, half a minute, um, to to come up to temperature. Like I say, I've I've got this turned all the way up, the temperature turned all the way up for ABS. I haven't tried it on nylon, um, it's a good example of uh, die swell. So yeah, it's a, you can see it's swelling up there, the, what's left in there from last time swelling up and uh, popping out. Um, so I haven't tried it on nylon, but I don't see any reason why it won't work on nylon. Uh, might not get um, up hot enough, um, looks like it's got a PET nozzle, so it's not a metal nozzle on there, it's just a plastic nozzle. Um, I'm so sure Jack Guy or Ryan or any of those really experienced guys will know exactly how all this works. But anyway, for £35, yeah, uh, from Hobby King, uh, came from China, you can't really go wrong, I love it, one of my favourite tools. So, um, yeah, we'll get it going, so um, let's get some filament coming out the end. It would make a really good um, teaching aid, I suppose, for explaining to kids how 3D printing works. Um, so, okay, so that's, oops, let's see if you can see that. So that's at the slowest, slowest, slowest rate, yeah. I'll turn it up to full speed now. And that's at like full speed, oops. Oh. Yeah, it, it, tends to, it tends to swell a little bit as well, so you go. So that's full, oh, missed it again, hang on, let's try again. Here we go. So that's full speed. Struggles towards the end there, you know, it sort of swells up and does whatever it does. But anyway, like I say, even if you're just using it for welding, <laughs> like I do, and joining plastic and gluing plastic and whatnot, um, it's a really, really good tool. So, um, we've got our piece that needs repaired. So this is a really bad example. So I won't be using this for moulds. But I kept it aside because it's a really good one to practice on. Now, one thing to just bear in mind: um, if you were to start doing your repair from this edge here, from the big gappy edge, and work towards the the small edge there, the chances are, by the time you got over here, that that's going to start cracking again. So you'll be chasing your crack. Um, it's just because all the all the um, swell and whatnot going into this, just, just pushing the crack along. Um, I remember when I used to weld, we used to, and we, particularly with aluminium, it used to be awful with aluminium, or cast iron was another one. Um, and what you basically did was just drill, drilled a hole through, through there to relieve that area of stress. Um, same thing with the plastic, yeah. If you find that you're welding, your cracks are moving, yeah. All you want to do is, it, I haven't drilled, but what I do is I put a melt a blob of um, ABS on the edge of the on the end of the crack. Um, let it cool, make sure it's right in there, and then if it's a really big crack, I might do like a balanced sort of type weld where I won't weld it all in one go. I'll just do a bit at a time. So you do, you'll do a bit over here, do a bit over here, do a bit over here, do it. And that way you're not going to put heat in all in one place, um, and that seems to work well as well. Um, so anyway, let's get on with it. Um, so in this instance, let me zoom back down a bit so you can see a bit better, hopefully. It's sort of kind of working upside down here. Yeah. Um, 
So obviously, once the um, once you stop using the pen, it, it kind of um, draws. You know, it's typical dice, what I think it's called in the um, plastic world. So you might need to just hold your forward button for a bit. It's actually it's that. It's got like an automatic cut off as well, so it cuts off if you're not using it. So um, we're good to go again. So you might need to hold it on until it starts to feed through again. Okay, there we go, it's starting to feed through again. So I'm going to stop, take it off. I don't know if you'll see it, it draw a bit. So I like to start basically with the end clean like that, so I can get the heat right into the into the plastic. So what I'm going to do is just hold it in there. Okay, you want to get it so the plastic starts to melt. Yeah, don't start up, yeah, adding your filler before you've got the the plastic melted. So I normally wait for it to. You can feel it go into, it and then just hold down the the trigger and put your glove on. Okay. If you're quick afterwards as well, you can press down if you don't mind the, the heat um, to smooth it out. So, yeah, it doesn't look very pretty, but it's going to dress up nicely. And then um, do the same over here. I think we'll put a little spot over here as well. Hopefully, you can see that. It's very much like welding, you know, MIG welding or TIG welding for any welders out there. Um, you know, heat up the material so you're getting good penetration um, and you're going to get good fusion um, with the plastic as well. Let's go over here. And do some bridging over here. Okay, so we've got some globs on there. Okay, Oops. hopefully you can see that. So what I'd normally do is do, you know, again, move it around. Don't don't put the heat all in one place. Yeah. Move it around. Get them all tacked up. Be quite systematic with it. Strange working upside down. Like I say, it's 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 just I'd like it to be a little bit hotter, if anything. Um, hopefully you can see it burning here. Again, you need to wipe off that swell the way it sort of draws out there. So we start. Hopefully you can see that burning. Yeah, and then add your plastic. It took a little bit of time there to, to, for the plastic to come through. Um, it's basically because it's all pushed out the nozzle prior to me doing it. So, um, let's do some welding. Let's just get the first joint done. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to go... <laughs> like I said, it's really weird working upside down. Okay, so I'm going to do from this I'm going to do a run from here to here first. So get it melting. And as soon as it starts, you'll, you'll feel the... Um, you'll feel the tip try to... There we go almost like aquaplane, I suppose, you know, it'll, it'll, it pushes itself up off the surface and all I do is since your windshield swells, yeah, not too fast, you're not too worried about how it looks, you know, um, not too worried about how it looks because we're going to sand all this off, what we're looking for is a, a nice um, penetration with the infusion, so um, and again this one here, you can almost do it Without any, um, without any filler. So, um, let's see if we get a little bit closer for you guys.
Hopefully you'll see that. Um, right, let's do this bigger, this bigger gap down the bottom. We have to do some weaving on this one, or bridging, I suppose it's called in three D printing terminology. I'm just doing like little crescents, just like back in the day when I was a welder, on the bottom of a ship sail or of a pipeline. There we go. Oops. That's seen that. Do here as well. Nice big gaps here. 